Hello, hello everyone. Uh, thank you. I'm extremely happy to see all of you here. Uh, thank you for showing up. I'm sure today is going to be a fun day. We, I'm super excited about the program that we have today. We're going to hear from people from the Frontier AI Labs, researchers from research organizations, startups, investors, and we will be talking about the Frontier Engineering and Research in AI, and of course about open source and distributed AI. And one of the reasons why we decided to organize this conference is because we believe that AI is uh, rapidly transforming the economy. And those who control the AI will have disproportional control of the economy. And we believe that the economy should remain open, transparent, fair, democratic, and accessible for all. So today I want to start, I want to give you uh, a crisp mental image how we think about the impact of AI technology on the economy. What is the practical implication of the technology on our daily lives? Soon all of us will have dozens of AI agents in our pockets and in clouds uh, doing work for us. And organizations that we are part of will have hundreds and thousands of AI agents that are working 24 seven doing this work. But more importantly, those agents will get economic agency. Those agents will become real uh, economic actors and that will transform the economy. And that's what I want to talk about today. So for the past 35 years, the uh, digital economy grew to uh, many trillions of dollars. And today, a large portion of that economy can be called attention economy. Uh, E-commerce and social media and di digital advertising and the B2B software combined those industries uh, are valued today at more than $10 trillion per year. And the attention economy is built on the notion of capturing and transforming user attention. It is measured by hours that you spend uh, on the platform. It is measured by clicks and CTR and CPM and your time that you spend to get the service. But uh, we believe that this is going to change. And we believe that this will transform into the intention economy, which is measured not by the input that you uh, uh, that you spend on the platform, but by the outcomes. Intention economy is about your desire, your wish, your intent being transformed into the solution by the network of AI agents. And today I want to tell you three stories about uh, people, why this is what people want and need and why this is happening, about the economy, why this is almost inevitable from economic standpoint, and about the technology, why today we have a lot of the components and tools and systems to build it, and what opportunities does it create for all of us here. So I will start with the people. And this is my son. His name is Lev. And when he was three years old, I noticed uh, something in his behavior. When he wanted something, he just said, I want a juice, I want an ice cream, and it appeared. He didn't think much about you know, supply chain, logistics issues, and economic components of how this juice is produced. It just happened. And for all of us here, when we were his age, uh, this was the most natural way and interface to communicate with the world. And I believe that this is the main idea and the main result of the intent economy. This is the user experience that's the most frictionless and the most natural for people. And if we look throughout the history, for example, in shopping, e-commerce, or just generally commerce, 100 years ago, if you wanted to buy something, you would go physically to the store, spend time on uh, uh, transportation, find something that you want to buy and get back. Uh, 50 years ago, you might use a catalog and order something via the phone. And 15 years ago, you would go on Amazon and make a one-click purchase. But this is not the ultimate user experience. The ultimate user experience is the one where you just say what you want, and your personal AI agent just finds the best possible uh, product or solution for that need right uh, in the moment. And I tried it uh, uh, um, for, I, I wanted to buy a bicycle, to go to Burning Man. 
And instead of spending hours reading the forums, like what bike do I need, and comparing different prices and different suppliers, I just used the AI tool, and it read 16,000 pages for me, and found me one single uh, offer, one single product that I bought. So that saved a lot of time. But this is not just happening on the individual level. This is not just about shopping. This is also happening on the corporate and organizational level. Um, a few months ago, we published this article called Post Cozy and Economy. And the main idea of that article is that AI agents today are radically reducing the transactional costs uh, in the economy. The idea of Ronald Coase, the nature of the firm, is that companies, organizations exist because transaction costs, costs of searching, information, bargaining, uh, uh, contracting, policing the deals, are lower within the company than on the open market. But this is not as much true anymore because for AI systems, for agents, those costs are becoming so much lower that we can use open markets and make them, make them efficient. Um, we've been also investing in a lot of startups at CyberFund, and a lot of early stage startups, we notice this uh, AI native organizations. So we notice that these companies have much uh, more compact organizational structure because they have AI agents that are doing the work. So instead of hiring maybe five engineers, you would have two, but they will be heavily using, you know, 20 different codex or code cloud instances and do the work. And most importantly, that saves the uh, main, uh, that saves the most important uh, uh, thing for the company, which is communication bandwidth, the time. Because people, we talk at about, I don't know, three, maybe five tokens per second, if we're talking fi fast, but AI agents can communicate at hundreds tokens per second, and that creates this additional efficiency, and that's why it is transforming the economy. And this, in my opinion, is the most important chart uh, when it comes to AI progress uh, in relation to the real economic impact. It shows the amount of time that AI agents are uh, capable of doing autonomous work. In this particular case, it is about the engineering, um, um, code generation agents, but I notice um, similar, uh, similar trends across different agents in accounting and legal, in marketing and uh, uh, different areas of the economy. And I think this will continue, and as you can see, it is growing exponentially. So the main idea of the intention economy is that instead of spending time on trying to find information, reviewing, connecting, and uh, communicating, you would just submit your desire, your goal, your intent into the network, and it will be automatically completed. Now you can ask why this is, should be a network. Why won't this be a single super intelligent agent that would just do the work for all of us? Well, first of all, it doesn't exist. And second, there's a lot of economic reasons for why the markets have to be distributed or decentralized. So the intent economy is transforming platforms where you spend time for completing your work into markets. Every need every intent becomes a market with a bunch of AI agents competing to solve that market and make money by uh, solving that problem. And in order to make that market, so because AI agents are doing this work, it guarantees the best possible user experience, but in order to guarantee the maximum efficiency of that market, we need, uh, we need market mechanisms. We need, uh, and more specifically, uh, we need auctions, because auctions are the most efficient uh, mechanism of price discovery. There's been uh, a Nobel Prize in 2020 awarded for this work, and actually uh, a lot of work before that showed that auctions are the perfect mechanism to uh, create the efficient price discovery and guarantee the best possible price for a market. And um, we've actually been using auctions a lot on the internet. If you remember eBay and similar products, why we don't use them now? Because it's time consuming. You need to spend time, you need to monitor your bids, you need to look at uh, 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 products. So now we have AI agents that can do this for, for us. And we can reduce these transaction costs of participating and, and running auctions online uh, and, and, and make it much more efficient. And also in addition to just the market efficiency, 
there's a lot of uh, hundreds of years of the economic history that proves that markets win over centrally, uh, uh, centrally planned systems, that we need division of labor, that we need biodiversity, that our brain is even designed in a way that it's not a single system but a competition of multiple agents uh, that, produce, uh, 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 that produce the outcome. And that is why this economy has to be not a single uh, entity that's competing. And maybe the, um, uh, the, the, the uh, another, in, another reason why it has to be a distributed system is because if we have a platform that has AI agents that complete your goals, that complete your intents, you will not get the most efficient outcome. You would get the outcome that is just as uh, good as you would buy, as you would pay for, but not the best possible on the market. It will not guarantee your price. This platform will be, will be incentivized to front run you uh, and uh, offer you anything that is enough for you to buy. So um, now I want to talk about the technology and the practical aspects, why it is time, why we need to focus on this right now. There's a lot of work that has been done and a lot of opportunities that exists for builders, for researchers, for investors. So how does this system work? It starts with the user intent on the left. You specify the goal. Let's say I, it could be something simple. I want to buy a bicycle. It could be something much more complex. I need to organize an offsite for my team of 10 people next month in Lisbon and I have a certain budget. So for this second task, it is not one single agent. No, no LLM, no AI agent can complete this task today. But this is a plan, uh, but this task can be orchestrated and divided between multiple specialized systems. One might be a voice generation agent that would call and book something. Another would be an LLM to create a plan, or it can be a code generation agent to build a landing page, etc. And once this plan is completed, this intent is formed uh, in a detailed way and submitted into, the, is into this distributed auction mechanism. So on the left, we can see an intent pool. These are all the intents from all the customers who want to have certain needs and wants, and they're ready to pay uh, for, for solving that. On the right, we have solvers. Solvers are players. It could be companies, could be automated agents. That is just incentivized for, uh, by taking those intents, providing the solution, and making money. And this creates a competitive market dynamics. Once there is a match between an intent and the solver, they can uh, create an automated cybernetic or cryptographic contract to seal that, um, that agreement. The key innovation of this market compared to the existing uh, financial markets, for example, is that we need a multi-attribute uh, auction mechanism for it. Today, any order book or any auction is typically, typically has one or two dimensions. It is you're competing in terms of price or maybe price and expiration date if it comes to, uh, if it's about options. But for these kind of intents that are not financial instruments, there's a, a lot of attributes that you need to specify. It is about the price, it is about SLA and ETA and different constraints and policies and all this different information that you can specify within the intent. But in practice, realistically, it will probably be your intent translated by your AI agent into a well-specified personalized RFP that then uh, put into the intent pool and then uh, this auction is happening. So once there is a solver who won this auction, once this is completed, um, we have a bunch of standards that allow interaction and interoperability and creation of this, uh, um, of this um, uh, complete system. So we have agent-to-agent, -agent, A2A protocol that is responsible for, trans for, uh, for translating context and information uh, between different agents. Uh, we obviously have MCP protocol that allows creation of the supply chain of agents and tools and able to pass authentication and context and call different tools on demand. Uh, we also have uh, 
uh, ERC-8004 protocol that is responsible for validation. Because if we design an open market mechanism for uh, uh, AI system, for, uh, for AI agents that are competing and solving intents, we need a way to validate that this work has been completed uh, and um, with, with, with the right quality. And we need some kind of validation. Either this uh, agent will be rerun, or it can be run with the trusted execution environment, and the receipt can be produced, or uh, there might be an economic validation mechanism on top of that. Um, and um, also, there's a lot of work, and I know a lot of companies here, uh, or some, 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 some of you present here, are working on X402 standard that is responsible for payment mechanism built for agents and working between agents. So all these standards combined allow us to build this uh, distributed and fully programmable economic mechanism that enables the intent economy and enables creation of this automated uh, and, and summary economic system. So the important piece here is that it's not just about the agents communicating to other agents themselves. It is the institutions. We need a new institutional mechanism for this system to be open and to have trust. Like in real life, we have legal system and police and courts and institutions that create trust in the society. We need similar thing to be created for the agent economy. And this starts with the privacy of the user. Your context must remain private. If I am organizing an off-site or buying a bike or planning a trip, as much of my personal information should remain private. Ideally, we need to use the cryptographic systems, uh, cryptographic technologies like zero knowledge proof or fully homomorphic encryption that enables me to never share my personal information but have this um, work that is done by the agent personalized for me. And on the other hand, we need a public reputation for the systems because if the market is permissionless, anyone can participate uh, and create this agent that will be solving problems and solving debts for people. We need the notion of public reputation for the agent that is tracking what it has done before, it tracks its performance. So for example, when I'm ordering an intent and it has high, vo high value, I can say that it can only be accepted and can only be executed by the agent or the system that already has a track record of completing similar intents. And of course, if it fails, there has to be a, a, a record that allows to me to specify the correct, uh, the correct reputation. So these create the institutional mechanisms, the cybernetic institutions for this agent economy. And this is all, uh, all like, all of this doesn't exist today. This is just the idea. This is the vision for how the agent economy can be created. I do believe that this will be created quite quickly, and we will see something like this in the next 12 to 24, uh, 24 months. And there's a lot of work to be done, but also this market is huge. Uh, this is about disrupting the $10 trillion industry. If any of you are interested in this from a research standpoint, if you're building companies, uh, building products, uh, please find me, find our team, or reach out. Uh, would be, I would be super happy to speak with you. Uh, but with that, I really wish you to have a great, fun day, and I hope that you will enjoy DHI Summit. Thank you. <laughs>